Welcome to Christchurch Online and Merry Christmas! We're still in the Christmas season, so it's right to celebrate Jesus' birth and focus on Jesus' birth. I'm sure Christmas itself this year has been very different for every single one of us. But I do hope that in spite of the differences, we've been able to reflect on the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into this world. Let's begin with a prayer. God our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful way to think of the light of the world coming into the world, of the light of the world drawing us to himself, of the light of the world filling us with his light, that even in the darkest times we may shine out with the message of his welcome. And now we're going to join with the angels as we sing together our praises to God. Oh uh -huh. 
we give glory to God, willingly and joyfully. We also confess our sins to God, sometimes willingly, sometimes reluctantly. But God is our Father, the Lord Jesus is our Saviour, and the Holy Spirit works in our hearts that there may be no secrets between us and God. So we confess together. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore we seek God's forgiveness through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. We pray together. God, our Father, you sent your Son to us, full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, forgive us. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Lord, forgive us. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, forgive us. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are forgiven people. We are celebrating the birth of our Lord. And now we turn to our Bible reading for this morning. This morning's reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it's written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And as it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, so he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, when Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asia. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman, 
who was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple but serve God with fasting and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for that reading. Well, it's Christmas. Would you like to know a Church of England secret? Well, did you know that up and down the country there are vicars who have never ever preached on that Bible reading? No, I know, but it's true. Because churches that follow the set pattern of readings always have that reading on the Sunday after Christmas and lots and lots of vicars go on their Christmas break on the 26th or the 27th so they're never around in church to preach on it. There you go. So the next time <clears throat> you talk to a reader who is fed up of the fact that they get left to preach on it when their vicar is away, think how lucky we are at Christ Church because here I am. <laughs> I find this reading very profound and also very human. It's very human in one way because Joseph and Mary were poor and we know that because of the sacrifice they offered in the temple. The sacrifice that they had to offer according to their traditions as a thanksgiving for the arrival of their first son. If they'd been wealthy their sacrifice would have been a lamb, but the poor were allowed to substitute a pair of doves or young pigeons, which is what they did. Now, many of you will know that before coming to South Osset, I was vicar of a parish with some very deprived areas in it. And there were occasions when very poor families wanted to do the right thing before God by a baptism or a wedding or a funeral and they did their absolute best to dress as well as they could for such an important church occasion. I can imagine Joseph and Mary doing the same, maybe even borrowing clothes suitable for a visit to the grandness of the temple and maybe even having to borrow the small amount of money they would need to buy the doves for the sacrifice. But there's also something very profound here, if we have eyes to see it. Jesus is the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. That's what John tells us in John 1, 29. But the Lamb of sacrifice required for Jesus' birth is substituted by doves. And in John 1, 32, we discover that the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus in the form of a dove at the beginning of his ministry. So a substituted lamb marks the birth of the one who will die as the chosen lamb of God. In his own sacrifice on the cross, he offers himself up for the lives of others. And the doves that mark his birth foreshadow the spirit who will descend upon him for ministry and, after his death and resurrection, make new life possible for us all. If we have eyes to see what God is doing, there are some pretty big hints in this passage. It's very human in another way too. There are lots of people present, and two of them are prophets, Simeon and Anna. And both are prompted by the Holy Spirit to give testimony to who Jesus is and what he will do. Human beings telling other human beings God's plan. 
while Jesus, the baby, who is too young to speak yet, is the Word of God, as John tells us in John 1.14. But the Word of God says nothing. And so God's entry into the world is marked by layer after layer of meaning. There are a huge number of people in our country who celebrate Christmas and love to hear of the birth of Jesus in our traditional nativity stories. Eight days later though, on January the 2nd, for most people, Christmas has been replaced by New Year and even that's over. It's now January the 2nd and it's back to life as we know it. For anyone who has eyes to see though, eight days after Jesus' birth, when his parents present him in the temple, is when the good news to the world really begins to take shape. So celebrate Christmas and Jesus' birth and how he came into this world, but make sure you move on and begin to think about who he was and why he came. And may the Lord bless us all this Christmas season. Let's worship our Lord who brings joy to the world. Sweet chiming Christmas bells 
there's been a lot to think about in this service. And if you would like to know more, do contact us at Christchurch. Our contact details are on the card at the end of this service. But now, let's turn to prayer. Good morning, my name is Gareth Phillips and I'm going to lead the intercessions for today. We've been remembering the birth of Christ over the last couple of days. And for many of us, we would normally expect to spend Christmas with members of our extended family, people maybe we haven't seen for a, a long while, even in a normal year, but this year it's been even worse. We may not have seen some people since last Christmas. So Lord, we just want to pray for all those people that um, we're not able to connect with at this time of year, not able to meet up, to hug, to kiss, to greet, to tell them we love them in person, face to face. Help us, Lord, to do all that over things like Zoom, WhatsApp, Facebook. But it's not the same. Lord, we just ask that the Holy Spirit will pass on the message from us to our families, to our friends, that we love them and we care about them. Merciful God, hear our prayer. And Lord, whilst we think about families, many of us will have older relatives. We pray, Lord, for the successful rollout of the vaccine against the COVID infections. That our families and our friends who are uh, vulnerable or older are able to get it without too much trouble. And also, Lord, we ask for the rollout of a vaccine that we'll be able to use throughout the world. We know the vaccine that's been coming at the moment is only able to use in places where they've got special refrigerators but we ask lord for a vaccine that is able to be used elsewhere in places without such facilities that just use normal refrigeration and cooling we ask these in our prayers lord and father over the last few weeks i've had the dubious privilege of delivering food par um, Christmas parcels, mainly food, to people through the kindness scheme. I don't know, I've seen some really poor looking houses, houses which you look through the windows and there's little there. And then on the same trip you'll see some really posh, well equipped houses. So Lord, we just pray for equality. We can't all have posh houses, but none of us should live more or less on bare boards. So please, Lord, help the government and us to try and level out the inequality in this country. And we pray for that, Lord. We pray for foreign countries, Lord, where there is war, where there will be soon famine, and where they all have the virus. Lord, we pray for good leadership in those countries, whether it be a government or a dictator. Help people, Lord, to look after their people. And I pray for the people of Christ Church, Lord, that they will have a, had a good Christmas and will have a good new year and that next year we can return to normal by the end of, by next Christmas at least. And Lord, we just want to spend a few moments thinking of those we know who are ill 
or recently died. We pray, Lord, for those who are left behind, for those who are under care. In just a few moments, let you think of people you know in that situation. Merciful Father, Jesus taught us the prayer that he asks us to use. So let's all join in with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against you. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for those prayers. Isn't it good to be able to pray together for the needs of the world? And let's be honest, our world is a very needy place. And if we focus on the world, there is much to dismay us. But let's focus on our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has come into this world and find our rest in him. Let's worship together. It's been really good to worship together this Christmas season and really good to remember again the great things that God has done in and through Jesus our Saviour for us. And now as we conclude this service together let's pray and as we pray there are words for me to say and words for us all to join in with. Let us pray. May the Father, 
who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shower that love upon all his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his birth gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whom Jesus came into the world, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks and praise to God.